Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to our Murray and Paducah live stream worship services. We want to welcome all of you who are live streaming today. Uh, thank you for joining our worship service. We want to welcome all those who are here in the sanctuary this morning. We're glad that you're here with us as well. We hope you will gain a special blessing. We, uh, I'll be introducing Pastor Kenny Shelton, who is with us, he and his wife today. We welcome them, especially to Paducah, and to lead out in our worship services for, for both Murray and Paducah via the live stream. And I'll be introducing Pastor Kenny just before he gets up to speak in a few moments. Again, we're glad that you're here. And I hope that you will be richly blessed. We're going to go through a few announcements, and then we'll do our responsive reading. And um, as we do our responsive reading, I want to remind you that we encourage you to have your mask on as you participate in the responsive reading, if you choose to participate in it. Uh, we do encourage, as, every, as you all know, with the wearing of masks, anytime you're up and about moving around, uh, once you're seated and we're social distance, you don't. It's a, it's optional to keep it on throughout the entire service. But anytime. We're speaking out or moving about. We want to be sure and keep our math, mask on. Um, the screen in the back is not working, so I'm going to have to turn around and look at my announcements, I guess. Um, want a reminder today that this afternoon at 3 o'clock is our memorial service for Donna Keeling. And um, again, uh, those that would like to attend are invited to attend the memorial service. We will be uh, practicing social distancing for that as well. We are live streaming the memorial service as well. So hopefully everyone will be able to, um, to, to witness the memorial service that wants to, either here in person at the church or through our live stream. We'll be live streaming it just as we do our worship service through our website or Facebook page. So we invite you to, to um, participate in the memorial service for uh, Mrs. Donna Keeling at 3 p.m. this afternoon, either here or via the live stream. A reminder that our Zoom prayer meeting has been moved to Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. And we're still in our study in the book of John. We invite as many of you as would like to join us for our Zoom prayer meeting and our, our study of the book of John Tuesdays at 7 p.m. A regular prayer meeting in person is here at Paducah on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. And um, again, we are meeting in the sanctuary for our 6.30 prayer meeting because that allows us to do social distancing as opposed to meeting in one of the other rooms as we have in the past. Friday at 6 p.m., we have a little Sunset Vespers, a Zoom. That's on Zoom as well, Sunset Vespers. And our Sabbath school is Sabbath mornings at 9.30. We have a class here in the sanctuary in Paducah, our Sabbath school class. And we also have a Zoom Sabbath school class at 9.30. So whether you're participating through Zoom or here in person, we hope you'll join us uh, for our Sabbath school classes at 9.30. We had two good classes this morning. Uh, Firm Faith led our Zoom uh, Sabbath school class. We had, they had some good discussion there, and we had a good class here with Carrie Welsh leading in the sanctuary today with their teaching our class. We had a good group here. So we hope that you will participate in these different worship options with us via Zoom or in person. At this time, I want to invite Elder Kerry Welsh to come up and join me as we do our praise and exaltation. We'll be doing responsive reading number 701 from the hymnals, which is taken from Psalms 100. And um, if you're at home, I invite you to follow along the whole way through and shout out praises to God with us. If you're in the sanctuary, I'll lead out by reading the red print on the screen. And Elder Kerry will lead the congregation, those who wish to participate in reading the black print. So let's lift our voices to God in praise as we go through this responsive reading taken from Psalms 100. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. I invite you to just uh, enter into a couple moments of silent prayer and meditation as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord this morning.
Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege of worshiping you on this, your Sabbath day. And Lord, as we begin this service, we ask for a special blessing of your Holy Spirit, that your Spirit descend upon this place in a mighty way, that your Holy Spirit descend upon every home that is participating in this worship service via our live stream, that every home and every heart would be filled with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you would bless that everything that is said and done today as a part of this service will bring honor and glory to your name. We ask for a special anointing of your Holy Spirit upon Pastor Shelton as he brings us the word today, that our hearts and minds will be open to receive that which you will bring to us through him. Bless us now, bless this service, so we thank you and pray in Jesus' name, amen. Our offering today, and as you see on the screen, there's um, different ways of giving. You can sign up online at the websites uh, for your uh, corresponding church, the Murray Kentucky Adventist Church.org, or the, there's a Paducah Church address. And also, you can mail it in. Each church has a post office box, as you see there on the screen. And we, instead of collecting the offering, Physically in the sanctuary here, there's a uh, offering plate in the back to put your offering in there. And the offering appeal today talks about uh, the golden rule. And everyone probably knows the golden rule. You've heard it many times. Treat others how you want to be treated. That's right. Okay. And so it talks about the church today. Does the church today treat its community how... It wants the community to treat our church. Is, is that the church golden rule? Jesus goes a little further. Jesus says, treat and love one another. He asks us to love unconditionally. So let's see the difference there. Not how we're treated by others do we love. The church is to love the community unconditionally. We're to love one another unconditionally. So our offering today is for the local church budget. We have received some uh, prayer requests, and I'm sure many of you have your own silent request. Do you have, anyone have a silent request? Okay. If you want to kneel or able to kneel, let's uh, kneel and go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, this morning as we have come here to worship you, to praise you, Lord, to lift you up. Lord, we've also come here um, with confidence, with love, uh, with assurance that you, you hear our prayers, you desire to hear our prayers. Lord, you know our hearts and our minds. We ask that you cleanse them. Make us pure in your sight. And Lord, this morning we, we come boldly to you with faith um, that you can be glorified in these prayer requests. And Lord, we pray for the pastor's parents uh, who have tested positive for COVID. Lord, they're not feeling well. Uh, we ask that um, your healing hands uh, be laid upon them. We ask for you to be with the doctors and the nurses and the staff involved, give them the knowledge, uh, everything they need to uh, heal them, and Lord, most importantly, we ask that you will be glorified in that situation. Uh, Lord, we uh, lift up Kay Clark, who's uh, having uh, such health ailments uh, today, this morning, and Robbie Anderson, uh, Roger's two friends who are battling cancer. We ask that in every uh, case, every situation, Lord, that um, physically, Healing will, will occur, and Lord, uh, spiritually, yeah. healing will occur. Lord, you are the giver of life, the yeah. producer of life, and, and the creator of life. And Lord, we know that you can give, give us um, such new life. Lord, we pray for that pouring of Holy Spirit with our, the believers that are here today. Um, we pray for Pastor Mike uh, for, for strength to carry on. Uh, pastoring the church yes. um, and Lord we are so thankful that Rachel is lifted up in praise um, for 
good health and for Josh on his third birthday this week. Well, Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. Thank you for this Sabbath. Thank you for the simplicity of your word. Uh, we thank you for the full understanding that you've given us in Sabbath school this morning. And we just pray that you will continue to lead us in our lives today. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. In talking to Nathaniel earlier this week, uh, we were talking about even though Donna liked some new songs, which would surprise you, she loved the older, older songs. And so I thought of an older song that I think most of us as Christians, at least all of us as Christians, should be looking forward to, and that is the peace in the valley. Well, I'm tired and so weary, but I must go alone. Till the Lord comes and calls, calls me away. And the morn is so bright, and the lamb is alive, and the night, night is as bright. As the sea, but there will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me, oh Lord. I There'll be no sadness, no, no sorrow, and no trouble, trouble I see. There will be peace in the valley for me. Well, the bear will be gentle. And the wolves will be tame And the lion shall lay down by the land And the beast of the wild shall be led by a child and I'll be changed, changed from this creature that I am. But there will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley. For me, oh Lord, I pray There'll be no sadness, no, no sorrow Oh my Lord, and no trouble, trouble I see There'll be peace in the valley for
Can you hear me? Now I'm back on. We are blessed today to have Pastor Kenny Shelton and his wife, Chris, with us. Many of you are familiar with uh, Kenny um, from seeing him on TV through, uh, all around the world through, on 3ABN. As you're aware, uh, Kenny and his brother Danny are largely the founders of 3ABN. And um, Kenny has been involved in pastoral ministry and our worldwide ministry through ABN for many years. He and his wife now are, are president and directors of the Behold the Lamb Ministries, which can be seen on 3ABN at different times during the week. And just a, a very active life of serving the Lord and ministry in many ways. And we are blessed and privileged, uh, Pastor Shelton, to have you here today. And um, to bring the word of God to us. So I invite you up now, and we thank you and Chris both for being with us today. Happy Sabbath, everyone. What a joy and a privilege to be here with you. Are you going to stand up yeah, there? I'll, yeah, I'll stand back there, but I thought if it'd be, you know, we do things different sometime. It's all right to do things different once in a while. We don't want to get in a rut, isn't that right? And do, I, I'm always used to of having my wife come up and pray for me. Would that be all right with you folks if I have her to come up? They said it's all right, honey, so come on up. All right. I'll have to use you, oh, All right. Is that handheld mic? No. You can stand here by me. You can pick it up if you want to. All right. If you don't mind, let's kneel together as we approach the throne of grace. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. And I realize that there's still sadness in all of our hearts as to why we're even here, you know, in remembrance of Sister Donna mm. Keeley. But at the same time, we have hope. Amen. We have hope in the resurrection. We have hope through Jesus. And Lord, we're looking for that hope today. Amen. So Father, I lift Pastor Kenny up to you in the name of Jesus right now and ask Amen. that you will fill him up, fill him with your spirit, Amen. Lord, that when he is speaking, we will no longer see, we will Amen. no longer hear him, mm. but we will hear from heaven. Amen. And that our hearts will be drawn to heaven. And that is our prayer in Jesus' you, name Lord. right now. Mm. Amen. 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 Again, happy Sabbath, everyone. A real joy and privilege to be here. You know, I thought about sometimes you have a, a message with what's taking place today, but you know, you'd talk to Sister Donna today. She'd say, Go preach the word. Preach the word. Go right ahead. And so, by the grace of God, we're going to look into the word today. Uh, you can see on the screen, we're going to be talking a little bit about the value of pain. How can that be? Value. Is there any value in pain? I think the Word of God is very, very clear on that as we look at the Scripture. Story told of a little boy. He said, Mama. He started out, Mama. This little child. And he said, My Sabbath school teacher said something very interesting to me. She says that we're, we're only in this place, this world, for just a little while. And that we should be preparing for another world, a better world. But he said, Mom, I, I don't see anybody preparing. Hmm. I see you are preparing to go to the country. I see Aunt Sue is preparing to take a trip. I see that Dad's preparing to go to, to work. Everybody seems to be preparing for something. But I don't see anyone preparing for heaven. Huh. Why? Don't they try to get ready? Man, what a question today. To get ready for the coming of Jesus. Maybe the Bible talks about a little child shall lead them. And I feel like I need to be that little child today. If you have your Bibles, and those of you who are maybe taking notes and so on and so forth, we'll move as quickly as we can. The book of Romans chapter 8. And we're, just, we're not going to read the verse 16 through 18, but I want to focus just on verse 18. Romans Chapter 8, we're going to read verse 18. And I always like to say, this is what the Bible says. Do you like that? Amen. This is what the Bible says. This is not what the, some preacher says. It's not what the evangelist says. It's not what the neighbor says. It's what the Bible says. 
It's what God says that we have an interest I know today. I know you do too. The Bible talks about in verse 18, He said, For I reckon. I don't know about that word, but I like it. I like that word, I reckon. Is that a southern word? Well, the rest of you are not going to get it. Okay. I reckon, he says right there. <laughs> that means he's come to a what? A conclusion. After thinking about the issues, he said, I've come to this conclusion. I've come to this, uh, you know, I've been thinking about this thing. And the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And so at even times like these and what's going on in the world today certainly tells us that Jesus is coming. Is that not true? Certainly things are happening, I mean, developing in the world today that I've never seen in my lifetime that encourages me in the fact that He is coming. That He's going to be here shortly. Things are going to erupt. And once they continue to move as they are right now, there will be no reversing. The scripture is clear. He said there's going to be some suffering in this present time, but it's not going to be worth thinking about because of that glory which shall re be revealed in us. That honor, that worship, that dignity, that praise, and even the character of God is to be perfectly reproduced in each of His children. If we want to go home, if we believe that maybe we should have been home a long time ago, is it possible that God is waiting on us? To be prepared and ready. You know, I find in this life, I've been around for a while, many times God doesn't prevent evil men from doing evil things. We'd like for Him to, it seems at times, but He doesn't prevent it. And notice, because God always has a way of reversing and turning those bad things into good things. Have you seen that in your own life? Something bad happens and God takes it and turns it right around and something good is developed out of it. But we have to have eyes, spiritual eyes and ears and mind to see those good things even in painful times. Opposition will come. There's no doubt about it. If you are faithful to God, if I am faithful to God, opposition is going to come. We're going to be tested. We're going to be tried. There's going to be persecution. There's going to be suffering in this world. But is our mind set upon heaven? Are we really ready to go to heaven? Remember what you may be going through today, or what I may be going through, the world is going through right now. This is called the furnace of affliction. Why is it that we have to go through this furnace of trial, furnace of affliction? Is it really worth it? Is it really worth all the pain that it cost? And I say, it's worth the pain. And you say, how? How is it really worth the pain? Because during times like these, I love that song, in times like these you need a Savior. In times like these you need a what? You need an anchor. And we need to be anchored somewhere. There's too many that are floating around in the world today that have no anchor. They're not anchored anywhere. Every little wind that comes on, they're blown here, they're blown here. Listen, as God's last day people, we need to be anchored in Jesus Christ. We need to be anchored in the truth of God's Word. Steadfast and sure. If we don't, we're going to be blown away. Heaven is never going to be my home if I don't anchor in Jesus Christ. How, you say, is this worth this pain that we go through? Because Jesus brings us nearer and nearer to Him in our time of need. I need to be drawing closer to Jesus Christ. I don't know about you. As we're drawing close to Jesus Christ, He shows us in such a loving way our weaknesses. And how our weaknesses can become strengths. We need to be strong, do we not, in Jesus. Isaiah 27, 5 says, Let Him take hold of what? Jesus says, Let Him take hold of my strength. So during times like these, what do we do? We grab a hold of this girl. We grab a hold of Jesus Christ. Get His strength. We need His strength. Hold fast to Him. We hold fast to Him in certainly in faith. He teaches us, and how we desperately need this, I believe now, I do in my own life, how desperately I need to be taught of my Savior how to prepare for the emergencies that are in the land right now and that will continue to come. Before Jesus arrives on the scene.
to take us back to heaven. I believe that we are living in a time of emergency. We, we're hearing sirens, as it were. There's warning signs. And you know what? If you're not hearing warning, warning signs, we need to go where we can hear warning signs. We need to be, because they're all over the place. And I'm sure that you're getting those warning signs right now that tell you that Jesus is coming. It's, a, it's an emergency situation. No time to just be messing around. There's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you are where you're at. I believe that with all my heart. God is still directing, is He not? Amen. There's a reason, there's a purpose for being here. And I believe this to repopulate heaven. How about you? Amen. The reason for us being here and going through is to repopulate what? It's to repopulate heaven. If you miss that, you've missed your purpose for being here. What good is there to be here in this life? The mess that we go through day in and day out. Think about it. I know tests and trials, we need to rejoice in them and character can grow, absolutely. But remember, we are to repopulate heaven. Every angel that fell, right, God is going to replace with you or me. Woo, I'm getting excited about that. And you know, I think, it's okay, pastors say sometimes, I think this, you know, my, I've been thinking this over. And for everyone that fell, right, God's going to replace it. Think about it. Not be a mixed number. Well, we, this, these here fell from heaven. To, God's going to replace it. He's going to restore, the Bible said, all things. But I tell you this. Those of you who stand for truth, just be prepared for a little opposition. Be prepared for opposition because it's, it's going to come. Test and trial, difficult times. The Bible says it in 2 Timothy 3.12. Remember, there's a value in pain here and things that we go through. 2 Timothy 3.12 says, And all that will what? All that will live godly in, in Christ Jesus. Hello, somebody. Huh? All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer what? So let's not count it a strange thing and say, Oh, no. He tells us these things are going to take place. That's part of being in this world and sometimes it's distasteful and we don't necessarily like these things. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10, I love this passage of Scripture, and I'm still working on it in my own personal life. Maybe you're not. Maybe you've mastered it. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. Well, most generally, when infirmities come, we're griping and complaining. We're a little bit upset, and sometimes the words come out, Why me? Why me? I hope there's no Joneses here in that sense that I'll say, the Joneses next door is doing well. <laughs> the Smiths. You know what I'm saying. It's always some. I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches and necessities, in persecution and in distress. Now notice, how can I take, how can you take pleasure in infirmities? How can we take any kind of pleasure in persecution and distress? But notice what Paul says. He says, I do this for Christ's sake. Isn't that beautiful? For Christ's sake, he's willing to endure. How about you? How about me? Because he says, for when I am what? When I'm weak, therefore I am strong. See, I believe this with all my heart. Millions of people around the world have physical, mental, spiritual, financial, there's all kind of condition things, things that are going on in their life. And they plead with God over and over, please remove these things. When something bad happens, we say, please remove these, Lord. Please heal. Please, please change the circumstances. Please change the situation. And, you know, that certainly reminds me is, you know, God, does God hear? Does God answer? Absolutely He hears. Absolutely He answers. And I'll put this nicely, where He can. But remember, Paul pleaded with God, isn't that right, for healing. And we believe that he had eyesight problems, is that right? And he played three times, but God finally said to him, you said, hey, hey no, what, what? My grace is what? My grace is sufficient. Huh? But he thought with earnest prayers, and by fasting, and maybe getting together and putting his names in the hat, that something Miraculous is going to happen, and we always want it to, and God can certainly do it, but the Lord has His own purpose. And not sometimes it's just not our purpose. But I'm learning over the years to you know, go along with what God said, not my will, but what? Thine be done. So he prayed three times about it, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, we just quoted it. He said, my grace is what? My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made what? 
perfect in weakness. And then he goes on, I like the words, most gladly, <laughs> most gladly will I glory in my infirmities. Most, that word's translated, listen carefully, most no, gladly will I joy, as it were, or glory in my disease. Most gladly will I rejoice <laughs> and glory in my sickness, in my weakness, in my time of test and trial. Mm. Now, why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's the bottom line, is it not? Listen, this church, every church... My personal life, we need the power of God in a way that maybe we haven't been seeing that God wants to pour out on His church and His last day people. We are sensing and seeing a movement that's going on with God's last day people. Now, who's God's last day people? You can be God's last day people. I can be anybody that wants to be. There are conditions, absolutely. We need to get in the Word of God, but we can be part of that family. We want to be in that family. If we ever needed good examples of steadfastness. See, too many of us in our life have been wishy-washy. We come and we go and we're here, we're there, and then we're gone and we come back and we're gone and we come back. You know, blah, 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 blah. We play the disappearing thing. God's looking for steadfastness right now because He's given us a message to give to the world, a warning message and a deliverance message, a heart-changing message to His people. And I like for us to be excited about it. It's excited because God is writing to you and He's talking to you and He's called you out of darkness, what? Into marvelous light. I'm not ashamed about that. I don't know about you. I'm not ashamed He's called me out of darkness into marvelous light. How about you? You know what a joy that is? I'll be careful with this. Somebody ought to hurdle over a pew. All right, that's not going to happen. All right, but you see what I'm saying? The excitement of it that He's called you from where you used to be to where you are today. That means his eye was closely on you. He saw something in you worth saving. And to me, that's exciting. Because I look in the mirror, I don't see anything worth saving. It's just, yeah, somebody get real about it. Haven't you looked in the mirror lately? <laughs> Maybe you might come up with the same thing. Is there anything? There's nothing worth saving here. But God sees something. He sees a finished product. He sees what can happen, right, as you let Him come in and let Him do the work that what you can be like. And this is what He's looking for. Witnesses today. Let me just give you some few quick examples. I'm talking about the faithfulness of God's people. Those who would bear witness for Him. And too, many, too often we spend our time reading in the Old Testament or the New Testament about those who were faithful and that's good, that's wonderful. We need to have that. But God's looking for that today. Steadfastness. Faith to the cause faithful witness you remember John the revelator absolutely what, what a witness he was banished where to the Isle of what uh, Isle of Patmos why he was banished for the, what, the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ he shouldn't have been banished we think he might have wondered about it he was banished but you know that's when he spent more time with Jesus that's when Jesus gave him the message in the book of Revelation and things that we need here in these last days. There was a purpose. God had a purpose. It didn't seem like it be banished, but it did. And he was faithful. Joseph, whoa, what a man of God. He was lied on. He was maligned. His character was, oh, I mean, was thrashed. He was persecuted because of virtue and integrity. Some of you may have virtue and integrity and somebody's tried to cut your legs out from under you. Are you still there? Somebody's tried to tear you down. Somebody's tried to destroy you, destroy your life. Hmm. Men before, you know, have went on before. Jeremiah. All he did was speak exactly what God asked him to do. I wonder how many of us can be counted as faithful today to speak what God has asked us to speak. I'm talking about being faithful. That doesn't mean, oh, well, I don't want to say this because the church will be mad at me. I don't want to say this because somebody else is going to get all upset. You know, it's about a time for people who maybe got a little bit upset. It's time to rustle some feathers, as it were, to the point, stir the pot. Because what? Because if we really believe Jesus is coming, somebody stir the pot. 
If we believe it. See, a problem, we talk about it all the time. I'll be careful. I'm not talking about this church. I'm not talking about anybody. I don't know your life in here. We're, just, we're talking. A lot from experiences of traveling around. Talking to a lot of people. They say, I want Jesus to come. But I also love the world and the things that are in the world. And it's just hard to give certain things up. And uh, Oh, Jeremiah did what? He spoke exactly what Jesus told him, God told him to do. And it enraged the king. It enraged the princes. You remember that? And what? He was cast into the pit. What would we say today? If you did exactly what the Holy Spirit impressed you to do, and a lot of times you will do that, and other people will tell you, you, you shouldn't be saying that. They'll say you should have been quiet. That's one thing I don't like to do is be quiet. Come on, somebody. Is anybody else that way? Absolutely. Why? Because you've got something to say because God has given you something to say. And to hold back, we, we, we become unfaithful to the cause of Christ. I don't gauge anything on whether this person likes this or that person likes it. Is it the Word of God? Is it founded in the Word of God? Then God challenges us to get that Word out. Poor Paul, bless his heart, and pretty faithful. Even prison, he was beaten, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked, put to death, bless his heart. Why? Because he was nothing but a faithful messenger of God. How do you think you're going to get out? I'm going to get out of this world without any scratches and bumps and knocks and bangs. Stephen was stoned because he preached Jesus Christ and him crucified. Did we get it? Yes. Yeah. They're, these, these were doing the right thing, and look what happened to them. Daniel cast into the den of lions. We know why. Why? Because he was true to God. We sang it in Sabbath school. We sang it all our life. Dare to be a Daniel. And yet we sing it, but do we live it? Is it really a part of us? Is it something that's eating on the inside of us? I feel like sometimes there's something burning inside that's got to come out. Things that need to be said. And let the Holy Spirit take it and put it in your heart and in my heart and my mind and then by the grace and strength of God to, to follow through. David, a culprit of an individual at one time, but a man after God's own heart. He was hunted like a wild animal by his friends, as it were. Hmm. <laughs> Yet he remained true to God. Believers in Christ hated, persecuted by the world. And so there's a narrow path that we walk in, that we should be walking in. Because we're to be made pure and purified by this furnace of affliction. No one likes that, I'm sure. But remember, all these tests and trials are what? Somebody say God's little workman, and that right to purify us. These are God's little workmen. I tell you, if you, oh my, if you give me my way all the time, I'm easy to get along with. Am I the only one that's going to be honest? The rest of you are saying, oh my. Well, pray for me. It's okay. It's all good. But you notice, if you get your way all the time, things kind of, it's, it's all good. It's when you're crossed. It's when you don't get your way that your true character is exposed. And I've had my exposed a few times. I think I heard a few amens from people who've seen it. Okay, bless you. <laughs> but how good God is, right? Remember, we get closer to Him. He reveals our weaknesses to us. And then He, he wants to be our strength or give us that victory, not continue on that way. Isaiah 48, 10 quickly says, Behold, I have, notice this, refined thee, where? I've refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of what? Of affliction. Isaiah 48.10. Notice how it reads quickly again. Behold, I have refined thee. This is a refining process that we're going through right now before everything breaks loose of the big time of trouble. And most people say they don't want to hear about it. We need to prepare for the big time of trouble. And you know what I'm saying. I'm talking about spiritually here. 
Because if we have a difficult time now, oh Lord, have mercy on our souls as things really break loose in this world and they're getting ready to. That's not to be discouraging today. That's to be encouraging because you serve a God who's big enough. His eye is on you. He's watching over you. He wants to take care of you. He wants you to be His witnesses. He wants me to be His witnesses. Huh. I looked that word up. I've chosen thee in the furnace. What do you mean the furnace? Well, I know what a furnace. I'm thankful for a furnace when it's cold outside. Somehow that furnace produces a little bit of heat, doesn't it? God's looking for heated Christians, though, by the way, too. But that simply just simply means it's a, uh-oh, it's a place for cooking. God said, I've chosen you, right, in the furnace of affliction. I've chosen there because, I, oh, I need to do some cooking. I'm not talking about food now. Stop. He needs to do some cooking in us. Huh. I need to do some, it's that furnace, the word means there, some, something that's been, you know, somebody's been doing some digging out. We've been so covered with dirt and sin and corruptness in the world today that we need to get back into the, notice the word, excavating. God is excavating us out of the mess that we are in and wanting to raise us to the higher ground. Praise God for that. Furnace of affliction. That means affliction means misery. It means trouble. Malachi 3, 2. For he is like a refiner's what? Fire. Fire. Huh. He says to me, Kenny, I want to remake you. Before I can take you to heaven, I'm going to have to remake you. I'm going to have to transform you. I'm going to have to purify you. I want to bring you to completion. We sing that song, I'm, I'm climbing Jacob's ladder. Are we climbing Jacob's ladder? Or we got to the first rung and then we just want to stop? Oh, we can't stop. No, stop now. Please don't stop. This is coming to an end, and maybe rather quickly. Letter 69, I'm going to read a paragraph, 1897 this was written. It could have been written, as it were, yesterday. Well, this is what it says. It says, sorrow and trial must come to all. And it is beautiful only, as, notice this, as it works to polish, to sanctify, to refine the soul. Huh as a fit instrument to do service for the Lord. See, the Lord can't even use us. He won't use us until we give ourselves into His care and His keeping so that He can buff the rough edges off of me. So He can shine me, right, with His glory, His strength and honor. We need to be used. Never say, oh, my, 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 my cup is full. You can't do anything with a full cup. You can only do with that which is running over the side of the cup. Does that make sense? Our cup needs to be overflowing. And he said, I want to buff you and shine you so that you can be an instrument in my service. Surely today, every one of us wants to be an instrument in the hand of God. To lead someone to Christ. How often we talk about it. How often we preach about it. How often you've heard about it all your life. Some people will sit and they'll hear it and they'll just, they'll just sleep on. This is no time for sleeping. This is right now God's people need to be wide awake as never before. Because Christ will, by the gospel, He will reform His church. He's going to purify His church. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He's going to sanctify a people. He's going to get rid of that dross that is on the inside. He's going to take off those spots that are on the outside. If you're like me, there's some spots that doesn't need to be there. But I have to submit those spots to Him. And he wants to take those spots away. And it might be a little painful, but he wants to take those away. We need the Holy Ghost. Can I say Holy Ghost? Yes. Absolutely. Well, some of you look doubtful. We need the Holy Spirit. Yes. We need the joy in the church. Yes. The excitement in the church. I'm not talking about overdone deal. I'm talking about when the power of the Holy Ghost is here, we see God working miraculously in behalf of His people. We're seeing on a daily basis God's doing above and beyond the ever said, and we believe it's only the beginning now and those who are working for Him. And that's everyone here in His service. There's no doubt about it. We want to be a part of that. 
We're not going to let Him go until He blesses us. How about you? Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost working. And the Holy Ghost is going to work with fire. Because we need it. It needs to be turned up just a little bit that we may, you know, that we may be where we need to be in our relationship with Him right now. How do we bring glory to God? You've read it in Revelation 14. That's part of three angels' message, is it not? Give glory to Him. And I'm sure you've won. How do I give glory to God? It's certainly not about doing, about doing the wrong things. How can I bring glory to God? I found this little article. Manuscript 16, 1890, this was written. It starts out, how can I give glory to God? This is what God said, you're here to bring glory to me. Not glory to self. Self has to be crucified. I was afraid here, when you get up and you give a word, the speaker needs to stand behind the cross of the Calvary, not in front of the cross. Is that right? Jesus needs to be seen. He needs to be felt. He needs to be heard. But too often we take credit. People take credit for what God is doing. Please don't do that. How do we give glory to God? To give glory to God is to reveal His character in our own life. To give God glory, right? It's to let His character come through and flow through that others may see and sense and know. In any way that we make known the Father and the Son, we glorify God. How have you done this week? How have you, really, how have you done? Just between you and God. Have we really done what we feel that God has been directing us to do? Has it really brought honor and glory to God? Has it brought honor and glory maybe to us or attention to us? Or have we failed short? Has our influence been horrible in the home? Has it been horrible in the workplace? I think it's something that we have to think about. And it may boil down to something very simple. It may be very simple to the point is, it may be a little more difficult, but to say it, it boils down to His life must be our life. Think about it. His life must be what? But our life. We must seek to be like Him. Quit letting the world take us. One of these days it's going to be too late. We need to come to the point that we commit our will to Him. Not, not, not my will, but thine be, be done. Have we really come to that Garden of Gethsemane decision. Job chapter 19, verse 25. I'm good, my eyesight's not very good because I can't see the clock and I feel, I feel good. I think that's, I might have seen a few heads do like this, but that's, I don't care. I'm a visitor and you have to love me. I heard that up here, isn't that right? Love. Unconditional love. Pastor will have to say, Kenny, sit down, then I'll sit down. Job 19, verse 25, the Bible said, Job 19, verse 25, the Word of God, notice this. This was during, this was during his affliction. Notice, you know this well, but notice what he said. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. See, the simple question is, do you know that your Redeemer liveth? Or is there something that you just heard all your life and mom and daddy's taught you and but you never had that experience that you really know that He lives. And He said, And I know that He shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. Then He goes on, and I love this. He said, In my flesh shall I see what? In my flesh shall I see God. Huh. I love that. I know that my Redeemer liveth. And then that's something you can go around. You say, well, I can't give a Bible study. You can go around to the neighborhood and say, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that by faith I'll see Him someday face to face with Christ my Savior. I know that my Redeemer liveth. To me, that's just so exciting. I know it. In my flesh, I'm going to see God. How can we rest with any kind of confidence and assuring, assurance based on God's Word until we can say, I know He liveth, and because He lives, I shall live also. Whether it's loss of loved ones, whatever, we have a hope that the world doesn't have. We have a hope. 
You talk about the second coming of Jesus. I love that. It's exciting. It's really, I'm sure you read it many times, it's a very keynote of Scripture. Jesus is coming again. But there's some today say, I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, in John chapter 14, you remember Jesus was speaking, and we know those verses 1 through 3. He's gone to prepare a place for us. And then, of course, we got Thomas gets involved a little bit here. And Jesus said, remember, I will come again. Remember, it's written as though it's already taken place. That's how positive it is. I will come again. Friend, don't miss it. Don't miss it for anything. He said, I, I will come again. Huh. And of course, we had Thomas. He kind of gets involved there. And John, was, that's John, uh, what, John 14, 4, he, he talks about that. And then he, Thomas goes on and says, well, Lord, we, we don't know the way. See, there's people today who say, we don't know the way. Jesus turned around and said, you know the way. Are, do we, are we getting that? Read John 14 and read verses 4 through about 6 on there. And, and he said, you, knew, you know the way. Hmm. You, where I go, you know, and you know the way. And then he goes on in verse 6, he says, Because I am the way, and the truth, and the what? And the life. That's it. You must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We've heard it all of our life, and maybe outwardly you said, Oh, I do, I do. But we just want, don't want to follow in His footsteps. It's been too difficult. We have to deny self. We don't want to do that. We want to hurdle over those things that are our pet peeves. He'll bring you right back over it because He wants you in the kingdom. You know why I say today? Because you know where He's at. And you know the way. Because He is the way. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of what? The name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. Just say the name Jesus and all of a sudden there's, just, there's like power in the room. Is there not? Seriously. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's what that song says? There's victory in the blood of the Lamb. Man, if we just said Jesus with victory, He's there. Amen. How God's people can be ready. Oh, I want us to be ready. I don't want anybody here to miss. I don't want to miss. And I want to be there. To live this long in this life and not make it. Oh, my lands. Is it okay to say that? Think about it in your own life. Why pretend? You don't need to pretend. I thank God for the Word. I thank God for the testimonies. I thank God. He's made it so clear. There's millions and millions today have started out on a journey. A few more men. I don't even know what... Thank you, honey. <laughs> the only one in the building is... So what time is she said, honey, don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. Oh, I'm going to bless you. I will, though I'm always a stickler on the clock. Try to be. Millions started out on a journey. When did you start out? I started out to travel for the Lord many years ago. You remember that song? I've had a lot of heartache. I've had a lot of grief and woe. Ooh, but then I would right, get serious with God. We started on the journey toward heaven... And it seems that maybe only a portion is really serious about preparing for that trip. Think about in your own mind, are you really prepared? Am I really prepared? Is there something that I should be doing? We know it's by grace we are saved, but there's things that God requires of us to test your loyalty and your obedience. Let me just ask you, is your relationship, don't anybody answer, but is your relationship... Better with Christ now than it was, ooh, when you were baptized or when you just gave your life to Christ. And if not, why not? Shouldn't it be growing all the time? Should it not be? You know, the more we fall in love, right? The more you're married, the longer you're married, you should be loving more, not less. Huh. If it's not, why not? Is there something that's come between us and God? It needs to go. There's nothing I can think of worth missing heaven for. Jesus made it so simple. He did in Matthew 12, verse 30. He simply made a statement. He said, He who is not with me is what? Is against me. And if you're not doing what? If you're not gathering, you're doing what? We're scattering. 
God's people don't need to be scattering right now. We need to be coming together because we have a work to do. It's much easier as God's people gather together with the same vision in mind that God has given His last day church that we put our tennis shoes on and we run like the Dickens. Anybody home? Can I say that? It's too late. And we run with it. We take off with it now. Now's the time. Those who are saved, I've thought about it many times. Found just a couple of lines I thought was very interesting. Manuscript 105, 1901. It says, starts out, listen, those who are saved. Now surely if I said, do you want to be saved in God's kingdom? Every one of us would say, oh yes. Now, I'd probably have to get up here and almost pull teeth to get everybody to stand up. Because somehow, pastors, sometimes we're a little bashful. But you know, this is no time to be bashful. If we say, don't have to do it now, I'm just saying, if we say, how many want to be saved in God's kingdom? Probably every one of us eventually would get up, yes, I want to be. Well, there are conditions. Half would sit down, maybe. There are conditions, and notice this, when those who are saved must know, travel the same road that Jesus traveled. Journeyed was the word. We must travel the same there's value in pain. It may cut and it may hurt, but there's value there if you look for it and pray about it. I love this here because I, I love to talk about the cross of Christ because I know that's where the victory is at. A little magazine review in Herald 7, 13, 1905 says this. Notice this quickly. Notice. We are to lift the cross. What are we to do, Church. We are to lift the cross, notice this, and follow in the steps of Christ. Those who lift the cross will find that as they do this, the cross lifts them. Oh! And it points them to the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Today I want to lift the cross of Christ. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, we'll do what? We'll draw all men unto me. We, Sometimes we just talk it. Sometimes we're just a ooh, bag of hot air. Now, we know there's no one here, but just let me just talk. Sometimes I've got to get it off my chest. I think I'll just explode sometime. Any of you feel that way? Yes. Well, I hope you do sometime. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, so full, He cannot stay in. He has to come out. This is what we want. We're going to lift the cross and as we lift the cross, try and lift the cross, Jesus up, He lifts us up out of this sinful world. Oh. And what does it do? And then the cross points us to the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. You know that. And what is it, John 1, 29? Your whole life will change. And it'll stay changed as long as you behold the Lamb. And so, like even here now, when you're hit with a bomb... When I hear different ones that are sick and COVID and mom and dad and all, it's like death, separation, heartache, sorrow. There's sometimes I just want to run in the woods and get away from it for a while. I don't know about you. Maybe you feel that way. It's almost too much sometimes. There's sometimes you just can't take another phone call. You can't hear anymore what people are going through. It's too much. And that's when we must shift it over, right? Always shift it over to Jesus. Shift it over His shoulders, because He can carry it. I can't carry it. It's too much. But He volunteers to do it. Kenny, I'll take those things. Life hits you, it knocks you goofy. Is that a word? It does. That means you don't know where you're at, you don't know what's going on. It's just like boom, 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 boom. But many get discouraged when this happens. But let me tell you, if we are feasting on the eyes of Jesus Christ and having the mind of Christ, we will not get discouraged. We will not be deterred from our road and our trip and our journey toward heaven. Because there's value in pain if we just learn to accept it the way God has lovingly explained to us why. Continue on. And I just say this, just a few more minutes. 
The closer we get to heaven, the steeper that the road is going to get. The rougher it's going to get. The more scratches and knocks and bangs that's going to come our way. The journey becomes more difficult. Come on church, are we there? The journey gets more difficult as we go. But God is what? He is able to strengthen you. And He says He's going to do that. I believe this. We've come, we've come to the parting of the Red Sea. As God's people. We're, we're coming, I'm talking about that parting. I'm not talking about all that beforehand. I'm talking about we've come to the sea and all of a sudden the water on the left and water on the right is way over our head. Oh my. And the armies behind us we're going to be overtaken if we don't have faith to step in. Pharaoh's army is behind us and they mean business. And I just say this, you have a choice. I have a choice today. And we cannot continue to dilly-dally around. I'm talking to myself. I'm not trying to talk to any individual here. I'm not trying to say anything to you. The Holy Spirit can do all that. But I felt for years, you can't dilly-dally around anymore we don't have time take time off for this take time off for that I know come apart and rest a while but we need to be focusing on every day changes are happening in the country that I live in that I don't even recognize anymore the church I don't recognize this world and there's some bigger ones on the horizon and just stick your head in the sand and just say, well, let's not, let's not talk about those things. We're going to talk. Listen, today we've talked about Jesus Christ. We've talked about the power of the cross, have we not? That He will lift us up, point us in the right direction, give us what we need. But let me tell you, there's a message to give because the world needs to hear it. They need to hear it. And God has chosen you to give this message once and for all. Give it. No dilly-dallying around. No longer messing around in this world. Today we choose once and for all to be on the side of Christ. Today, today by the grace of God, we know that He's going to deliver us if we put our hand in His hand. He can deliver us from the most impossible situations. Some of you have been in some of those situations. It's impossible. You don't think you're going to ever get through. Because as soon as you get hit on one side, you get hit on the other. You've not even got your senses about you and that you're hit again. But God has seen you through for a reason. He's brought you through these impossible situations just as He did for Israel when they were at the sea. You remember, read that sometime when you have time. That's Exodus 14. Read the last several verses, like 29 and 30. Read those all. It makes some big... I'm, I love what it says. And it says, And the Lord saved Israel. Amen. What happened? That day when it was impossible, the Lord saved who? The saved Israel, notice it, out of the hand of the Egyptians. He's going, to save, he's going to save you out of the hands of the Egyptians. He's going to save you out of the hand of Babylon. Babylon's creeping in. Babylon's trying to take over as it were. We need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus Christ like never before. If heaven's going to be our home, we must cut loose of some things right now. Does that make sense? We've got to cut loose of some things right now. Early writings, 56, 57, a couple more minutes. says, I was shown that it is the will of God that the saints should cut loose from every encumbrance before the time of trouble. It'd be silly, even in this time that we're living in and the three o'clock still on my mind. But we would have to, we, we can't sidetrack. We can't get sidetracked from what God is telling us to do. Remember, the world will never be the same again. I don't believe it'll ever go back. That's my own opinion. The changes have come and they will continue to come. At every change comes a new test. And many's not going to continue on. It's going to be too much and they're going to be dropping off. The road becomes too rough. Don't let it become too rough for you. Take hold of Christ today. God's looking for a people, there's no doubt in my mind, whose faith is moving. He's looking for a people that their faith is what? It's moving. A faith that is growing. A faith that's put into what? An action. Is it? Think about here in the church. Pastor in the church, we want the faith to grow. We want people to be active. We want them to be moving and growing. Man moves and God moves. God's not going to move unless you move. 
And he's going to move right along with you. And then we find this, that faith is manifested by works of obedience. When the, gro- when the going gets tough, the, listen, the cords of faith are released from God out of heaven. Did you get it? The cords of what? You remember the impressive dream? Sometimes some of you can go back. and These are cords of faith. And that cord of faith, when the world has nothing else, and everything is taken away, we need to embrace that cord. Put our whole weight, soul, body, mind on that cord of faith. Certainly it's none other than Jesus Christ. If not, we may be left behind. Cling to Christ. To spend all your weight on Him. Because my Bible tells me that's today in 1 Peter, 1 Peter 5, 7. He said, cast all your what? Care. All your cares on Him because he, he cares for you. If I've said nothing else today, and it's not what I've said, it's how the Holy Spirit of the living God is going to take what's said and put it in your mind and in your ear and your mind. If you came hungry, you will be fed. If you wasn't hungry and you didn't want to hear it, you'll leave and you're going to be empty. It's not a time in Hurt's history to leave empty. We need to leave full today. To realize He's sending those cords of faith right now to us as His people. How many will by faith reach out and take a hold of it and say, Lord, today is the day. Today is the day. Maybe we've wafted around a little bit. And maybe it's not. It's just you want to renew your commitment to Him. Why not? This is how the church grows. The pastor will tell you that. As the church buckles in together, they recommit their heart, their mind, their soul to the cause of Christ. You're going to be there to help. You're going to be there to encourage. You're going to be there to give Bible studies. Whatever it takes, you're going to be a help. And you're going to quit putting yourself before God's work. Just in case that may happen somewhere. He said, you put Him first and all these other things will be added. Isn't that right unto Him? Why not today? See, that's the thing. Why, why not today? There's, there's value in pain. And many of you are going through pain today. A different kind of pain than maybe you've been in, you've gone through before. But why not cast your care upon Him because He cares for you? Again, the world is torn apart. It's going to be ripped apart. And where will you stand? Where will I stand? I ask myself that question every day. Where will I stand? And I keep saying, God, I want to stand on your side. But it's going to take some decisive action. And some of that is making that decision. I want to. And you say, well, I've done that before. But maybe not like today. Because today you're going to say, like never before, I want to be on the side of Christ. I want to be on the winning side. I want heaven to be my home. And I look around all my neighbors and our friends, and I want them to go there too. And you know, Brother Kerry, we want to see our loved ones again. We've been through a lot of losses, and it's too much. And one of these days is going to be where it's not going to happen again. But you're going to have to decide. Would there be anyone today if it's okay to do this? I don't know that it is or not. Pastor hasn't said you can't do it. But I think it's always time for a call. Sometimes we don't give a call enough to come. Now remember, what does that mean? That simply means that you, 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 just, you stand up where you're at and, and you come forward. You're not just today. I don't think we should just kind of slip up our hands and say, oh, wait a Heaven's taking note of every person here, of every heart, every mind. I know in mine too. But why not today, by the grace of God, you take a bold stand. Let the universe see where you stand. Let your neighbors, let your church, let your pastor see where you stand. That you can be counted on by the grace of God to do what needs to be done. To finish this work. If there's any building going on, it needs to be expanding this church. Because God's got people, and I believe they're going to be coming in. Will there be anybody that will come forward today so we can have a prayer? Good. Praise God. Now, it's not, we don't, I say we don't need to hesitate. It's no pressure because somebody else is coming. You know, don't, don't worry about that. It's between you and God right now, is it not? So if God has spoken to your heart, and you 
Remain seated in your seat. I put the pressure. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit puts pressure on it, isn't it right? It's not me, but the Spirit of God. If He's spoken to your heart, your heart, your heart, we must respond or we've rejected the Spirit, isn't it? And I've talked to many, and Pastor has too, and you have evangelistic series and different things sometimes. They'll say the Holy Spirit would just tell me, go up, go up, go up, but, but, I, but I wouldn't do it. And then what happens? Oh my. We've seen a lot of bad cases. So praise God, everybody's standing. Everybody's come forward because you want unity in the church. You want power in the church. You want to move like you've never moved before. Mm-hmm. And God says He's going to do that. Amen. This is the day, is it yes, not? Yes, it is. I want to thank God yes. for walking in and amongst us today. Amen. Thank I don't you. know about you, but many times I sense the Holy Spirit here. Mm-hmm. And when he was talking about the furnace of affliction, oh, and I don't know if you guys at home can hear me. I'm, I'll lean as far as I can towards him. It's okay, honey. It reminded me of a story, and I want you to think about this, that I heard from one of our good friends, mm-hmm. who is also our neighbor and our co-worker at 3ABN, and that's Brother Ryan Day. <laughs> we share. I he's love he's share. sharing. And they were talking about that furnace of affliction. Yeah. He was talking about a person that goes in and, and he, he, he molds and he finishes silver. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, if it's in there just a little too long, it's going to oh. scorch. Mm. He says what that master silversmith must do Ooh. is he keeps his eye as that silver's in the furnace. Mm. And the very moment. It reflects his image. He mm. pulls it out. Hallelujah. We are to reflect yeah. the image mm. of Christ. Amen. He's waiting on each and every one of us. Amen. Today is the day of decision. Amen. Today is the day that you can say, my life will never be the same again. I can tell you, this family can tell you, we've made many trips even after they quit coming to our church, and we have seen the power of the Holy Spirit work miracles in their lives. There's still power there. God is calling each and every one of us to hold on. Those cords, I implore you to go back and read that story. When they started out on their journey, it was a narrow path. And pretty soon it was too, it became narrow, more narrow and more narrow, and they had to let the wagons go. And pretty soon it was getting too dangerous for all of their stuff, and they had to throw it over the side. Mm. And then it was too dangerous for the horses. The horses' hooves were slipping. They had to let the horses go. And then they're walking, and then pretty soon they had to kick their shoes off. Mm. It was too narrow. And pretty soon it was almost too narrow for their feet, and then their cords were there. Hallelujah. The cords were there, and by faith, they had to hold on. Mm -hmm. They had to hold on, and the cord would get bigger and bigger, and they they thought, where is the cord coming from? Who holds the cords? Who holds Mm. the cords? We know. It's Jesus. Even though we're told in Scripture that it's going to wax worse and worse, we must keep our eye on Christ and reflect Amen. His image. You know, I, I think it would be a good time. For, uh, before we have prayer, I think maybe the special music, I think it would maybe be appropriate. That would be all right, Pastor, to have that and then a closing prayer. Yeah. I mean, right now it seems like I just want to pray. just want to pray. But look at that prayer in, in, in song, and we kind of sprung it on Nathaniel right quick. But, you know, God's man's always ready. Isn't that right? Yeah. Would it be all right if we just kind of stood here and just enjoyed it? Yes. Is, yes. is that okay, Church? Are you, are you all right with that? He said, we'll just kind of step back out of the way. We want to be here and enjoy it. I don't want to miss a thing. Amen. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting. Like a ship without a sail, Jesus, oh 
Jesus Do you know him today? Please don't turn him away Oh Jesus My Jesus For without him how lost I would be. Yeah. Without Him, I would be dying. Without Him, I'd be enslaved without him life would be worthless but with Jesus thank God I'm saved oh Jesus Jesus, do you know him today? Please don't turn him away. Oh, Jesus, my Jesus, for without him, how lost I would be For without Him How lost I would be mm, How lost I would be Hallelujah Where we can where we can, let's kneel, shall we, before God. Oh, Jesus. My Jesus. Without him, how lost each and every one of us are. How lost we would be. Especially as we come together and we're talking about different types of pain and the value of pain. Yeah. There's no hope without Jesus. Yeah. There's no comfort without Jesus. There's no strength without Jesus. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, for the promises that you've given to each and every one of us. And now by faith, I pray that people are reaching out and seeing Jesus has never before. Yes. May I reflect your image. May you point out those things that separate us from you so that we can get rid of them. Mm -hmm. As I often heard from my stepdaddy growing up, if we don't let go of the dross here and now, yes. mm -hmm. it will be burned off of us later. Mm -hmm. May that not be anyone's destiny here today. May we all be found in that first resurrection alive yes, yes, yes. or joined together Amen. in the air mm. to meet our Jesus, mm. to live forevermore on, in the courts of glory, yes. and then on that new earth mm -hmm. together to be reunited with those who have gone before us, oh, wow. mm. to see them to not be sick anymore, yes. to have that new body. Amen. And yet know them and love them and never be, again be separated yes. from them. That is our prayer today. In your holy name, Jesus. Mm. Amen. 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 I don't know, but I'd sure like to hear another verse of that. Yes. Is that acceptable? I don't know. I'm just a visitor here.